Welcome back once again to The Broken Past. Today, we've got a two-for-one special that we're going to take a look at. I picked these up on eBay about the same time that I picked up the yellow Game Boy Color from the previous video. Um, let's open this up and let's just take a look at what we have to work with. So as we can see this time, we have two of the Atomic Purple Game Boy Colors. Uh, these are a little bit more scratched up, at least the screen lenses are, compared to the previous yellow one. Uh, overall though, they don't appear to be in too bad a shape. They're really not too dirty. Um, some of the stickers on the back are getting some good yellowing and stuff to them, but that's nothing really too crazy. I can't really tell. It doesn't look like they've been opened. Everything looks, looks pretty intact on the inside. The cartridge slots look good, but let me read to you the description of the eBay listing. And it says, original Nintendo Game Boy Color times two atomic purple. Condition is four parts not working. And it shows a picture and it says, as you can see in the picture, one Game Boy powers on and reads games, but buttons do not respond. Other Game Boy does not power on. So we have two faulty, or two potentially faulty Game Boy colors to, to take a look at. One that powers on, but doesn't respond, and the other that doesn't turn on at all. So let's take a quick look at these two and see what we have to work with. So I'm going to start with one. Pop a few batteries in here. And we can kind of tell in there it looks like there is a little bit of corrosion on the sides. But if it's anything like the other ones, it's not going to be a hard fix at all. Let's see if this one turns on. Okay, this one turns on and it's got audio. So this must be the one that doesn't respond to button presses. So let's throw in a game and try that out. Okay, so it reads the game. And sure enough, is not responding to button presses at all. So it's interesting that there's no response at all. It makes me think there's got to be maybe a short in there, because I wouldn't think that all of these button pads would be dirty. So I would think that maybe it's one of these buttons is accidentally being held down or thinking it's being held down. So that one's interesting. We will have to take a look at that one. Let's take the game out. So this one works, it just doesn't respond to button presses, which must mean that this one doesn't turn on at all, which makes sense. If we look in there, we can definitely see that there is a significantly more uh, amount of corrosion, so it's probably a good bet that these are simply the contacts that will need to be cleaned, but let's give it a quick test and see what happens. Sure enough, just like with the yellow one we fixed in a previous video, no response on the power button at all, which makes me think that it's very likely it's just the contacts down here, which are due to corrosion, probably from a battery or batteries left in uh, and leaked all over. So we will tackle this one second. And first of all, we're going to take a look back at this one because this one, this one have, has me curious in that it turns on, but yet it doesn't respond to button presses. So we'll begin just like we did with the yellow one and start by taking off the back cover and getting a closer look at the system. So it's a tight fit, almost feels like there's something partially holding it down. I don't know if that's what that was. Interesting. It actually looks like this one may have been taken apart at one time. I'm not sure how well this is going to show in the video. But we have one screw here that has been pretty severely, let's see, 
right there. So I'm pretty severely stripped. So that makes me a little nervous. Somebody's had it apart and has potentially caused some irreversible damage to the board or just trying to get the board out. So let's see if we can get that screw out. Yep, that is most definitely stripped. And if I were to compare that to this other one, there's also quite a bit of green showing through that silk screen on the front. So I'm really curious what's going on here. I wonder if we can get that out with a larger flathead bit here. And we'll remove the screen, the ribbon cable. Take a look at what we have to work with. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Definitely have some corrosion issues going on here. You can clearly see that there's a good amount of corrosion going on on the start and select pads as well as the A and the B button. Definitely got a lot of blue going on in there. That will be curious and how well we might be able to get that cleaned off. I'm gonna start with just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. I'd like to get both of these fixed. Ultimately, if I need to, I can combine these two into a single one, but I'd like to have both of them fixed because I would like down the road to backlight one of these as well as leaving one of them original as well, as much stock as I can. There's a lot of some corrosion in the back too on the on the headphone jack. Definitely I don't know if they got water in through the headphone jack or what might have happened. Okay, well we also lost our speaker cables. Looks like we'll have to solder those back on. Just gonna hit these pads here real fast. This isn't gonna fix it entirely, but I wanted to see if this is at least enough to make some contact on here. I'm also gonna try taking a dab of vinegar, seeing if we can use that to get a little bit of that corrosion clean off of there as well. I'm not sure if there's a better, better liquid or not, but I like using vinegar for getting corrosion off of the battery terminals, letting it sit in it, obviously which we're not going to let it sit in it, but maybe enough just to break up a little bit. Of the problem is it's also appears to be pulling up a little bit of the pad, which I don't obviously don't want to do. Let's just try that real quick. Again, we're not going to have the speaker in place since that apparently just pulled right off. which appears to be due to this heavy corrosion on the side. So we'll have to solder those back in, but we don't need that just to test it out. We've got it all over the board. We've got a bunch, some of it up here in the corner as well. This board will definitely need a good cleaning, but we'll try just to see if that's enough to make it work.
And let's just see if that's enough to at least get button contact. And still nothing on this one. All right, so we're going to pause on this one for now and actually turn our attention to the other one and start taking a look at that one. Set this one off to the side for a little while. And let's take a look at this one that doesn't even boot at all. We can already see what appears to be a little bit of corrosion on these batteries. I'm sure this is not going to focus on here. Maybe it will. There's some blue right on right on the inside of the head of that screw. So this one may also have suffered from some water damage. Interesting. This one appears to have the exact same issue as the other one. We can clearly see we've got some corrosion over here on this corner, as well as this screw that's definitely pretty rusty. And is this one? Yeah, and stripped as well. Interesting. What has happened? And we can also see here, too, that the headphone jack has the exact same issue. Hmm. So I'm going to guess that if I take the multimeter and test for continuity, that we're going to have all sorts of issues. So that one's actually good. It appears to have a good connection. Huh, as does that one. This one here appears to be a bit spotty. I'm going to take a quick toothbrush and give a good scrubbing to those really quickly. I grabbed a toothbrush and tried to scrub in both of these battery terminals, both on the back cover as well as the ones on the board, just real fast without taking it all apart, just to see if that's going to make a difference. So real quick, I'll just drop this back in, throw the batteries in it again, and see if that made any difference at all. I'm going to guess probably not, based on what we're seeing in there. And sure enough absolutely no difference at all. So just for curiosity's sake, we have our fuse here and let's see if this tests good. Okay, so we do have a good fuse. So that at least is a good sign. Another real quick test. I'm going to attempt to clean out our power switch. Which we can also see, again, I don't know how well it's going to show up in the video, if it's going to focus or not. But it also has a significant amount of corrosion underneath of it. Which makes me believe that it's also corroded inside of the switch. So I'm starting to get the feeling that this is more than just your usual battery corrosion like we saw on the previous Game Boy Color. So let's just try this really quick. So drop our power switch in there one more time. Our battery's in. And let's see. It 
Sure enough, we still have nothing. So out of curiosity, let's also take this board out, see if we can use our flathead again to try to get this nasty screw out of there. There we go. I didn't even realize, maybe I popped those up. The ribbon cable is loose, but it should still start without that, so that's not a huge deal. Again, it makes me wonder also if the seller didn't have this apart at one point and stripped that screw as well. Yeah, definitely does not feel good. Yep, we have the exact same thing on this one as well. We also have pretty extensive corrosion on the same, same buttons. This whole side here is actually pretty corroded, as well as this big old battery terminal plate here, and everything down here, and even the start button. Everything is awfully corroded on this even all the way on this side. So I'm starting to suspect that, it's interesting, this is even white on here. Oh wow, that screen is also awfully wet. So I'm beginning to think that based on the consistent points of wetness, I guess, on both of these consoles, that I wonder if these were sitting in a box or sitting on a shelf from a cellar or something somewhere, you know, maybe like this, and then it flooded, and this whole side ended up getting flooded with water. Just on the fact that both sides are very corroded on the left side, not so much on the right side, except for this one that's got some issue over there. Um, but the bulk of it, you know, both of these have the screws on this side that were that were pretty eaten away. That makes me really curious on what we can even do to salvage either of these, if that's a possibility. I'm going to have to take a stop at the moment, take a look at both of these, potentially just take this out and just scrub the heck out of the board and see where we get after that. So I might take a look at that and I will be back with what I find out. So at this point, it's been a few days um, I've spent quite a bit of time on this. I've done a number of different things. Some good, some not so helpful, but here's where we currently are at. So on the first Game Boy, the one that booted up but had some issues with the buttons, there's a, there a good amount of corrosion on these pads here as well as the start and select. So obviously it's still not perfect, but what I ended up ultimately doing was I gave it a good scrub down with a, a toothbrush and then I let it sit in vinegar for about 10 to 15 minutes and let it eat some of the corrosion off of the pads. And then after that, stuck it in an IPA bath, let it soak for a while again, dried it off, let it fully air dry for a few days, and this is the result. Now what I've done since this point is I have tested it, and it does seem to be working a lot better. I also tested it with the screen of the other one that wasn't booting, that had the a lot of the corrosion that kind of bled onto the back pad. This screen also does work, so that's good as well. And again, this works, and it's much more sensitive and reactive now to these pads. So I believe at this point, we're kind of down to two pieces we need to do on this board. The first is to solder the speaker back into place since it had just sort of fallen off because it had gotten so corroded. So we're gonna clean the speaker up and then re-solder this. And I'll just do that off camera. And then also disassemble the rest of this and give the shell a good cleaning and then we'll be ready to go. So I'm going to sit this one off to the side for a bit. I will clean it to get everything as clean as I can get it and then we'll put it all back together and hopefully this thing will be working great. So this one's good to go. What's not good to go, however, is 
this one. I've worked and worked and worked on this one. This is the second one that we did that had a lot of corrosion as well. We can see that the pads on these are pretty good, actually probably better than the other one. Um, I've done the same thing. I've stuck it in a vinegar bath for a while and we still have a pretty good amount of corrosion here all around this. I've scrubbed it, I've cleaned it off, I've soaked it. It's still not working. Um, actually, I should probably check here. They do see that I've left it on. Let me shut this off for just a second. I tested this out the other night and it wasn't working and of course I left it in because I'd forgotten that it was turned on. So we test it over here really quick. We should still see this power light turn on if my batteries are still good and it does. So this has been my indicator on this one to verify that it's still working. But and this one, we can clearly see that if I get the indicator in place here. That we have absolutely no lights. So I don't know what to do on this one at this point. I've also tested both fuses, which I can pull out here. If I put the multimeter on continuity, I can see that I have fuse one and fuse two working. So the fuses themselves are good, but I have noticed that if I attempt to test continuity on the actual connectors back here on the power switch, this does seem to be a bit flaky. So I am going to give this, take this apart similar to what we've done with the Game Boy Advance and clean, just try cleaning the switch under there. That's the last thing I can think of on this one. If that doesn't work, then I'm going to have to call this one a loss um, just because I, I don't know what to test next on it. But we'll start by at least trying to deal with that power switch and see if that can at least kind of get us going. Yeah, so we can definitely see now. I'm not sure if it's in focus on that one or it'll be better in focus this one but the power switch side of it definitely has a lot of corrosion in it so I'm gonna try to use q-tip to see if we can't get this cleaned up enough and I also managed to desolder the entire switch in doing so I think that looks I think that looks better at least. And we'll do the same for the actual connectors here. All right, let's try to put it all back together and see if that see if that even made any little bit of difference. That's much more promising. So definitely didn't do the greatest job of cleaning that switch, but it's at least being responsive, which is better than I could have said before. After doing that, let's just try it out, see if it makes a difference. At this point, I'm not holding on a lot of hope. Um, if this doesn't work, I don't know what to do 
beyond this point, but we'll try it out just to see what it does. And for the moment of truth. Still nothing. I got this on video. I should be able to check my voltage across the two battery terminals here. And I can see that I have voltage. So the batteries are at least making contact throughout all the connectors. But this is still not working. So at this point, I think I'm going to call this one a loss. Um, I don't know what is wrong, but there's nothing more I think I can do on this one. So if you have any suggestions on what I should do next on this, please leave them in the comments below. Um, I'm stumped, so I would definitely appreciate any ideas that you have in order to see if we can get this working. But with that, I'm going to solder the speaker back on the other one, clean up the case, and I will be back. All right, so at this point, everything's been cleaned, washed up and dried, and ready to be put back together. So. Let's go through that real fast and we'll see what we have when we're all done. All right, let's try it out. So we got sound. And it appears we've got grade button response now. Left and right, start, select, and A and B are all working perfectly. Which is great news. So, throw the cover back on, and we're done. So, the great news is we did get one of these done. The not so great news is this one I can't seem to get fixed. Um, I don't know what's wrong. I'm definitely stumped. I've tried, like I said, the fuses, we've checked those, power switch, clean that, uh, clean the connectors. That's got good conductivity now, and yet it's still not turning on. I checked this screen in here and verified it booted. So at this point, I really don't know what's wrong. Um, if you have any ideas um, on what I might need to do to try to fix this, please let me know. I'd definitely like to give it a shot. I'd like to get it fixed. I was hoping to put an IPS screen on one of these. That way I could have one original screen and one nice IPS screen. But you know, I can't get this one working, so um, I might have to buy another one of these to do that with down the road. So I got one out of two fixed. So 50%. I was hoping for two, but you know, I'll take one over not getting either one of them fixed. And this one was the one that booted to begin with, but at the very least the buttons are now responsive and it seems to work great. Either way, even though I just got one fixed, it was still a fun project and I'm still happy that I at least got one of the Atomic Purples working uh, to add to the collection. So at the very least, I've got this one for spare parts down the road for everything else but the motherboard. But with that, uh, thanks again for watching and stay tuned. Today we did two consoles. Um, I think it's going to be the next video. We'll have an even bigger project to tackle. So look forward to that, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.